There are a lot of rumors and theories swirling around the internet with regards to what did pandemic do to cancer rates. And I've been looking for information to answer this. It hasn't been easy to find at all. And finally, earlier at the start of this year, an article came out published by American Cancer Society that provided some clues, some information for us for the first time. And American Cancer Society published an article on the yearly cancer state of the United States, and they published one this year as well in 2024. And the reason why this one finally can provide us with some clues and some answers to this, to these rumors as to what did pandemic do to cancer rates or cancer deaths is because they finally have some data that encompasses in terms of cancer incidents in the year of 2020. That's the year that was where pandemic started and where basically lots of services were most disrupted as well as mortality rates uh, for uh, up to 2021. So we're going to be able to dig into this. And then of course, we're going to basically discuss the article as a whole because they provided lots of very interesting information. Now, this was the content that was most interesting to me. That's not what this article actually really, I think, gained recognition for. It was more for the fact that one of the summaries of the article was that in 2024, for the first time ever, we are going to see more than 2 million cancer diagnoses in the United States. And because it's the first time, that's a big deal, I guess. And But again, for me, it was much more interesting in terms of information about, related to, to impact of the pandemic on, on cancer. So we're going to start with that. My name is Dr. Mikola Rashik of Neurogenomics. And let's go into this. Bear with me. This is going to be quite a bit of information. All right, so first let's talk about cancer incidents. So of course the pandemic disrupted a lot of services, disrupted access to both the diagnostic services as well as treatments to cancer for a variety of reasons. Obviously many services were closed down at the start of the pandemic. A lot of people lost their jobs and uh, were perhaps were not able to pay for these services or they didn't have access to insurance anymore to pay for these services. And finally, the last mention that the authors of this article said, and a lot of people simply were afraid of contracting COVID-19 and therefore they might have been avoiding access to such services as well voluntarily in order to protect themselves. So what that, does that mean? Currently, the authorities or what I label authorities like to mention that possibly disruption to these services, access of these services as well as treatment might eventually result in the, in the increased cancer rates. And there's these persistent rumors and that's all they are, right? And up to this point that perhaps there is now we're seeing a spike in cancer, in cancers in individuals post pandemic. And this might be one of the explanation as to maybe why. Now, the answer is not exactly what you would expect. It's a bit of a surprise. And we're going to get into this right away. So as to what, of course, what, what these disruptions, these services, the idea is, is that, look, like, as a consequence, you might not be able to diagnose people with, uh, with dangerous cancers. And that might, in, as a consequence, increase the mortality rates due to cancer. So that at least is potential prevailing theory. Now, what did they see? So, because now we, um, and why do we only see this data right now? They also mentioned, and this is something that um, I was curious about as well. Why do we finally see this data now? And they mentioned is that this is normal. You typically have a lag time of be somewhere between two to four years before you get the actual data for a given year. And this is, has to do with how the information is being collected from different uh, treatment centers and how that data is com compiled and verified before you finally can get an accurate picture as to what is truly going on. And this is why we're only finally getting the, some of the data for either the year 2020 or 2021. So in terms of the incidence rates, what are we seeing for 2020? And surprisingly, the actual incident rates for cancer dropped in 2020 
from a previous year of 2019 by 9%. So there was actually fewer fewer cancer cancer rates in 2020, the first year of the pandemic, the year that was that saw the most disruptions to to cancer related services. And this actually supports the continuing trend of what has been going on for a while anyway. So I thought that was interesting. Okay. What about deaths, cancer deaths? And so now let's jump into that. And they had the data all the way till 2021. And in terms of deaths, overall, the rate of cancer deaths also increased. They, they sorry, decreased. They decreased from 2019 to 2020, and they also decreased from 2020 to 2021. So that also suggests that Look, it wasn't that bad. Now, the authors explain it in, explain this in such a way that ultimately what it means is that the disruption to these services must have been with regards that we were not diagnosing cancers that are typically perhaps are not as fatal or deadly than what these services, disrupted services, would normally potentially capture, such as uh, obviously more benign tumors or asymptomatic cancers. So that's lucky because the services that were disrupted did not seem to impact the worst of the worst type of cancers. So that was the explanation. However, when it comes to mortality, let's elaborate on that a little bit. Because while the actual percentage of the population in the United States that died of cancer in 2020, 2021 dropped, the actual number of cancers increased by about 3,000. But this had to do with the growing population and aging of the population. The interesting component where the pandemic might have had influence is something else. And the authors mentioned where there was an increase, and this was two years in a row now, is the percent of people that died of cancer as a cancer being the cause of death, that increased. So if you take all the reasons why people die any given year, the cancer was second, second biggest cause of death for the Americans in 2021, accounting for 17%, 17 17% of all deaths. And that was an increase from previous year and also another year before that. And basically this, it goes against the trend that has been ongoing for many, many years where cancer, cancer as a cause of death has been dropping. Nevertheless, it's still the second cause of death amongst the Americans, only behind heart diseases being the number one death. And this is a very typical pattern in many countries all over the world. If you look at the number two reasons why people usually die because of why people die, heart diseases and cancer are usually one of the top two reasons. So that's not unusual. And the other say is that perhaps this small increase, up to 17% of all deaths accounting, being accounted by cancer, that indeed might have been because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So basically there is your entire explanation. And by the way, some of the, some of the age groups might have cancer, cancer is the number one reason, uh, um, number one cause of death, but not, not for the overall population. So basically there is your first explanation as to what was happening with the, with the pandemic and COVID-19, the first data, 